guys, it's Kylie from Cantrips Media. Today we're going to go over how I make journals. So you're going to watch this guy being made today from start to finish. So let's dive in. Okay, so we're not going to go into designing the actual notebooks right now, just because that's a like, several hour video in and of itself. However, I do have to show you at least how I print it. I do use Adobe InDesign. I pay for the full suite, so uh, and I have for many years now. We'll go into InDesign. We will hit File. We'll go down to Print Booklet. A little window pops up. I have specific settings for this already put into this for me, but we'll go to print settings and I'll just kind of show you generally what I do. I have to use my laser jet printer I'll hit preferences. And again, I have this already set up. So for my Dungeon Masters ones, I actually use legal size paper and then I cut it in half. So this will be legal size. I will definitely flip it over so it prints on both sides. And I want it to be in black ink only. If I don't say black ink only, I find that the colors are just not as nice. Then I'll hit OK. And print. And I normally print them in batches of 5 or 10. It does when you go into settings like automatically go back. But again, I have these already preset for me. So I'll make sure it has collate selected so that it separates the pages in groupings of the notebook so I don't have to go through and count each page out or anything like that or separate it myself. And then we'll hit OK and we'll print. We're not going to actually print because I've already got everything printed and there's a lot. So we're just going to move on over there. Once I have everything printed, then I come over here and I start cutting things with my heavy duty guillotine paper cutter. This bad boy can actually cut about five journals at a time for me. I tend to do less. Um, I tend to do about three because it does have some issues with the blade not cutting 100% straight every single time. So I do have to watch and adjust it. So it's better if I do it in smaller quantities in that way so that I can adjust as I go. And we'll be doing about three or four journals at a time right here. Once I have this huge stack of papers that has been cut, I then need to assemble everything. So I actually have two stacks, I have the front and the back, because again, I use a legal size piece of paper and I cut it in half. So half of it will be on one side and half will be on the other side of that legal size piece of paper. So I try to separate it into its individual books. I actually have a pile right here. These are some barred notebooks that I will be making, but I've already done the assembly part of it. What I mean by assembly, it's not just putting the front and the back together. I also add transparency sheets. So I have a whole stack here that are already cut. Again, I buy these in a legal size and then I cut them in half. So I'll put two of these in each. For my Dungeon Master Guide to Adventure, I put them near the encounter part where you track initiative because that is where I feel you get the most use out of them as a DM. The other part that I have to add to the Dungeon Master journals are the sticker sheets. So they don't come with my player's notebooks and honestly I'm grateful for that because it's a lot of work to cut these out and it's a totally different thing we can go through about Cricut and how I use my Cricut to cut the stickers and all of that jazz in a separate video. But I add these to my Dungeon Master Journal. Now I also have some Lore Maker ones. The Lore Maker stickers are a little bit different. They don't have the added text on it since I don't know what you might want to use tabs for in your Lore Master. That is totally up to the DM. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble all of these things and then we'll come back and talk about the next step, which is kind of fun, but also tedious.
We're back over here next to my guillotine and it's time for probably the most tedious part, the covers. So I've already printed the covers. I print them on cardstock uh, with my laser printer because I foil them myself here at the workshop. So these are just the DM ones. I also have a whole stack of player's notebooks ones. We got Rogue, we got Bard, we got the actual player's notebook, and then we have some Barbarian in here that we're going to be working on today. So we're going to time lapse me trimming all of these covers, and then we'll get to the act of actually foiling them. I use a mink foiling machine. It is essentially a high heat foiling machine. I used to use just a laminator because that's what I had, but after a while my laminator just started to not work as well. So I upgraded to this bad boy. It gets really hot, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually do two at a time. So we'll be doing like a lore keeper one and then a player's notebook one at the same time I normally put them so that the inner place where I punch them is on the outside that way I know that the inside is covered with the foil and I'm not going to miss anything the mink machine comes with a lot of different kinds of foil I use this gold one I have tried off brands before but they don't stick as well so for now, I'm still using just the Mink brand until I find one that is comparable and slightly cheaper. I can put all of this down below in the description if anybody's looking to buy a foiling machine, but this is the part that really takes me the longest because I can only do two at a time. I have considered buying a second Mink machine just because of this, but I can only do two at a time. So again, I cut enough for two pieces side by side. So that means I cut it at about eight and a half inches and it'll cover all of the stuff that I need it to without me wasting any foil on it. The foil goes into a pouch. So if anybody's used the mink machine before, they come with these little plastic pouches and I stick it in and the foil and then we'll stick it through here. So first I'm gonna turn this on and let it heat up and then we'll time lapse me foiling covers as well as I will probably try to cut the back covers. So for the lore keeper and for the dungeon master one, I just take a regular piece of cardstock which doesn't come in a legal size and I cut to seven inches which is the width of one of these notebooks. When I do that I do keep all of the scraps and I do have plans on using all of the scraps uh, later in a separate project idea that I have but haven't had the chance to actually design in in design yet so that way I'm not wasting paper. I do now have a humongous stack of paper that I have been hoarding since I know I'm going to be using it for that in the future. For the player's notebook, these are just, if you put them together, it's the same as just a regular piece of paper. So I just take the cardstock and cut it in half and then get my covers. I do think I have more covers in here than I need. I do sell them individually now, so I do try to keep that well stocked but also I'll always need more covers, so I'm not afraid of adding a few more and foiling them so I don't have to foil it later because again, this is the most tedious part of the process. It takes the longest and is um, something I have to kind of focus on. It's not something I can just do continuously without thinking. I have to make sure that everything is lined up properly and it does just take time to make it through the foiling machine. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into that.
Okay, so we're still foiling stuff technically. So this is like an intermediary step that I decided to do in the middle because I don't like wasting time. I, I like to kind of do things more efficiently, multitask a little bit, not too much because that can end up with mistakes. I already went ahead and cut all of the covers. So this is the player's notebook covers. And then I have the, there's a whole stack here. Then I have the bigger version for the Dungeon Masters one. The sheets that I get for binding covers are eight and a half by 11. They're actually a little bit bigger than that. I just cut them in half for the player's notebook. For the Dungeon Master one, I cut it at seven and a half instead of seven. That gives a little bit more of an overhang than I can with the player's notebook, which is also why I'm okay with providing the extra stickers in that because you're not going to ruin them as easily with this elongated cover. I can't really do that with the player's notebook without having to change my entire strategy or wasting a lot of this plastic cover. Uh, for this one, I actually keep all of the extra plastic cover and I'm going to use that again in a future project that I have designed in my head, but not designed yet. The only other thing though that's kind of bad about this is that they only, the binding company that I purchased this from rounds two corners on each side. So since I cut this in half, one side doesn't have a rounded edge. And on the other one, since I, again, cut it in half, it doesn't have a rounded edge on the one side. So I will go ahead and go through and I'm going to take my corner rounder. It's a paper punch you can get at like any craft store or I think it's even at like Walmart and stuff. But I'll link it down below if you're interested. This is what I use to round all the corners because otherwise this is kind of sharp and I don't want you to turn pages and, and cut your hand on my notebook. That would be horrible. So while we're waiting for the foil to finally finish, I'm going to go ahead and round the corners on all of these covers just so that I'm multitasking. So I've gone ahead and I punched my covers. Uh, so they're all punched properly, both the front and the back cardstock covers. I use my Lavenger punch for that. That's this bad boy here. If you're looking for why I use two different punches and what punches I use, I have a video about that that I made last week. I also use a the Arc Stables punch, which I will be using for the plastic covers. In that video, I talk about the difference between the two and I also reveal that I don't necessarily love the Lavender Punch like most of the community does and why I don't really love it. I also offer some alternatives to the punches that I buy since obviously I use these for business purposes and I don't mind spending a little bit of extra money but if you're looking for something a little bit on a smaller scale I have some examples in that video that might work for you. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to punch these plastic covers. We're going to take them and the cardstock covers and attach them with discs. So I'm going to switch to an overhead view because I think that'll be easier for people to see what I'm doing. And then once the covers are put together, we'll worry about these giant stacks of paper over here. Once all these covers are put together, then I just punch this stack of paper with my Lavender punch and put it together and the journal's done. So let's just dive right into that, shall we? Okay. 
There she is. So I will just do that about 50 more times. Then it's just a matter of renewing the listings on Etsy and on my website and she's done. So we're gonna time lapse this next bit super fast. Almost five right now, so it's gonna be a little bit of a late night for me, which is not typical, but I just didn't get as much done this week as I would have liked. So I'm going to be working on these through the night. In the time lapse, you might see me mess up because surprise, I am a human, so I make mistakes sometimes. Uh, if that's the case, most likely what I'm doing is I'm pulling from a stack of previously messed up journals to replace pages that I messed up. Um, I have a stack of uh, journals that I've messed up in the past that I've torn pieces from because I only messed up a specific spot in that one and I don't want to waste the paper or the pages, so I go ahead and just pull from that stack when I mess up here. I hope you guys liked this video. This is just an inside look at what I do at Cantrips Media and why it takes so long to make journals. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, it really helps me out. We have a new goal set. I'm hoping to actually do a giveaway when I hit a thousand subscribers. So let's try to get that number up there and we'll see what happens. I have a fully 100% figured out what I'm going to give away, but I'm going to give away something. Just you wait. <laughs> I'm going to go back to more of the D&D tips next week. Just had a little bit of a rough week. Couldn't figure out what to film. I'm also shooting this on a brand new camera, so who knows how long video editing might take me, but we'll, we'll see if I make it in time on Friday. If it's late, you know what happened. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. I forgot the journal. <laughs> I forgot to turn the AC off, so I'm waiting for it to shut off. So I will just do that about 50 more times, and... No, probably more than that. That's a lot of journals. Mm -hmm.